our first speaker. Please welcome Peter Franken, the director of Apex. And also, I have given you a brief, brief introduction of who he is. So please do catch him before he leaves the stage. Just run to the front before, like when he's like leaving. So I'm gonna leave now. Please give a round of applause to welcome Mr. Peter Franken. Yay, good morning, whoa. Who thought regulators can be sexy? Okay, <laughs> thank you. Good morning, it's always difficult to, uh, to be in the regulatory track, but uh, I think I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to make it as interesting as possible. Uh, I'm Peter Franken, uh, I represent uh, Apex here today. Uh, if you don't know what Apex is, that's good because we're gonna focus on it. I would like to start, up, start off with a video, uh, people talking about what we are doing. And then I'm going to go dig in a little bit further and see, you know, if we can have a good, good session here. So here we go. Apex Go. We're excited to join the Apex platform and work with other financial leaders in driving innovation and collaboration. Collaborations between emerging and established fintech players, such as those supported by Athens platform, these are crucial. We look forward to expanding in the region through Apex to enhance financial inclusion in the region. The alternative to Apex would have been to engage all these fintechs on a one-to-one -one basis working out our proof of concepts, our sandbox arrangements. It just takes forever. Open API platforms like Apex are critical for the success of FinTech ecosystems. For example, with Apex, we managed to build a successful proof of concept in less than a week. Pfizer found the APIX platform easy to onboard to and a great sandbox tool for the financial industry. And what's more, sitting here in London, we could successfully deliver a POC in Singapore. Apex platform enables us to bring our ideas to life using APIs from the National Stock Exchange in a matter of days, which would have otherwise taken us months. NSC is very delighted to be the first stock exchange globally on APIX. Our leading Philippine bank is going to use Apex platform and our location APIs to create a new generation of e-banking solutions. We're a great supporter of APIX. APIX has made the collaboration simplified with the financial ecosystem. We at Here Technologies are privileged to be partnering with APIX. We would like to work with global ecosystem participants on many other ideas using the APIX platform. MasterCard is honored to be inducted into AFIN. We believe we can contribute in deep and meaningful ways. APIX has made the unthinkable possible. Okay, thank you very much. If it doesn't get you excited, then I'm going to spend um, the next 60 minutes getting you excited. So thank you very much. Um, Apex, uh, we're a, a non-profit organization, and very recently we released a report. We spoke to 300 fintechs and banks 
in Asia to talk about their pain points. Uh, we're going to release this to the public, but the, the short of it is, is that uh, a fintech on average can easily spend 18 months to two years to get something sold to a bank in Asia. Banks, when they look for fintechs, they look on Google. I have no problems with Google, but uh, I don't think you're going to find a fintech on Google the way things are organized right now. So we have all kinds of things happening. You could see it in the video. You know, it takes forever to get your thing uh, in integrated or connected um, uh, to a bank or another financial institution. So this struggle uh, is not unique. We find it along, uh, across the world, and it comes out of all kinds of old practices that were built and engineered for all technology that we're not using anymore. I call it, you know, we have regulations, but we also have perceived regulations. They're like the regulations we think that exist, but actually are not there. We have all kinds of old processes. We have governance. We have all kinds of structures that make this a very, very tedious and very long process. Um, so why does this all matter? Why are we here? We're here in Singapore, the heart of, of, of Asia. Um, when we look across the region, uh, and if you're following you know, stories about financial inclusion, and etc., the reality is, is there's about a billion people in, in, in Asia that are not connected to financial services. This is a huge group of people. This also will require a tremendous amount of change in capacity building to get those people the services that they deserve. Uh, what does it take? To keep it really simple, in order to service those people, we have to lower the cost of financial products. Many banks uh, are not able to do that because of their old infrastructure, et cetera, and their old thinking. Uh, at the same time, over the last five years, specifically across Asia, uh, the penetration of mobile telephony has been amazing. Uh, when, I when I came uh, to, um, uh, to, uh, to certain countries in Asia 15 years ago, almost zero. 10 years ago, a little bit. Last five years, phenomenal. Some countries, people now have two phones instead of one phone. Interestingly enough, the penetration of financial services, specifically in rural areas, is as low as 30% or lower than that, even though uh, mobile phone penetration is near 100%. This also is, uh, uh, at the same time, there's a lot of so-called disruptors that uh, are trying to tap into these markets. I don't have, only have to mention Alibaba or Grab or companies like that that are starting to build bottoms-up financial services out of their core products. Uh, this puts a lot of pressure on existing financial institutions to start uh, uh, changing their thinking. Um, but however, most of these banks, as I mentioned earlier, are not digital. They're branch-based. They use uh, things like mainframes or core banking systems and are very heavy in the way they work. My prediction is, and you can debate this, is that in the coming five years, if you're a bank or a financial institution in Asia, if you don't digitize fully, you either be out of business or you'll be irrelevant. So to make this a little bit visual, I'm not sure uh, who recognizes this car. If you're from uh, Central Europe, you will definitely recognize this car. This is called the Trabant. It was uh, available in East Germany before the wall fell. It would take 15 years to get one. It would drive about 40 miles an hour peak. Uh, this was the only car available, so nobody noticed that there was something like faster speed or a faster car. Uh, they, they were known to fall apart regularly and stop uh, unpredictably. Uh, this is very much how current large banks or smaller banks that are running uh, are kind of behaving. They, they all look at each other and everybody looks the same. There is, it's, it's kind of perfect harmony. If you don't know what a Trabant is, uh, this is the equivalent in the Philippines. It's called the Jeepney. A Jeepney is an old car where people are kind of squeezed in. They're being replaced by air-conditioned buses. And the Jeepney drivers are telling each other that their car is better than the air-conditioned bus. Guess what the co consumers are going to do? They're in the air-conditioned bus. Things are changing, consumers and uh, businesses are moving very fast once there is something better around their car. So when we talk about Grab or Alibaba, all these digital companies, they're the Teslas of the world, they're entirely digital. They don't have all the drag uh, of, uh, of the past uh, to deal with. Now let's talk about fintechs. I'm not sure, who, who, who here is a, is a startup? Uh, any startups? Okay, so if you're a startup and you want to sell something to a financial company, this is kind of the experience you're experiencing. You're hitting the wall. Uh, your, your proof of concepts turn into a graveyard of, of wreckage. And that's what we, you know, what we learn from all our surveys. So how can we turn this around? So for example, if you're a startup and you spend two years to get a POC done, um, if you're, if you're, if you're uh, uh, your venture capitalists are still putting money in, but there's a lot of 
startups that don't make two years, okay? Um, so what we did is, is uh, we, we got a few groups together. One is the, the regulatory, uh, the regulators here in, in Singapore, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, together with the World Bank and the ASEAN Banker Association came together and said, how can we take this logjam out, out of the picture? Uh, IFC is interested in financial inclusion and SME finance across Asia. Uh, Singapore is very interested to make sure that their, 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 the financial ecosystem is, is alive. ASEAN Banker Association represents 200 large banks in Asia. Uh, so what we did is we created a company called AFIN. It's a non-profit organization, and AFIN owns the so-called APEX platform, which I'm going to talk about. Uh, so in a nutshell, simplistically speaking, uh, the APEX platform is, is a, is a, is a, is a one-stop shop where you can take your Trabant and you walk out with a Tesla, and it is powered by the fintechs of today. Uh, it also has an unfair advantage. It is a trust platform where we have worked with a lot of regulators and we have worked with a lot of or, uh, orga organizations to make sure that we have a critical mass where people feel uh, comfortable to, to work together. Uh, so how do, we tech up, how do we tech up the financial institutions? Uh, the platform has two major parts and a few uh, uh, smaller parts, but the two major parts is first of all it is uh, it is a directory for fintechs to publish APIs. Publish APIs doesn't mean that it is a static list of words. It is, the APIs are published and they're alive. You can immediately interact with them and use those. If you don't know what an API is, I would say uh, Google it and uh, you'll know very soon. API is kind of the common language that we can use between tech, uh, components so that they don't have to be integrated heavily. And heavy integration takes time. So APIs are very, very important. The second part is that this includes a development environment that is cloud-based where banks and financial institutions can immediately use those APIs and build applications, all right? And this is the important piece. So instead of spending meetings and proof, proof of concept, et cetera, instead of that, you take what you want to build, you go in and you build it. Everybody knows Lego. When we were small, we had, we had you know, we played with Lego. You were always jealous at the other kid that had better Lego blocks than you did, but on Apex, we tried to bring together all the good Lego blocks in one. So we create the fintechs. So what that means is, is that we do not approve them or disapprove them, but we have something like what we call listing criteria. If you look at a stock exchange, there are listing criteria to make sure that a company meets minimal criteria to be listed. These listing criteria are not very strict, but we want to make sure that when a bank comes and, and consumes an API, that things are expected to work and they don't lose time. Uh, the other important thing is, is for banks, this becomes, you know, instead of, you know, in a week's time, you literally can build applications. We also have done a lot of workshops. We know that programmers across Asia they will have no problem whatsoever to put it together. It's almost like drag and drop environment. It runs in the cloud which means is that banks, wherever they are, do not have to open up all the firewall ports to connect to all the different APIs that are on the platform. A big deal. Uh, trust me, a typical bank uh, manage, somehow figures out that it takes two to three months, typically, to open up a port on a firewall. Do not ask me why. It's a one-minute job, but that's the reality. So we also have a synthetic, syn synthetic test environment, so you can test your application with almost like real-life uh, real, real life data. Uh, we also have tools that allow you to integrate your application to existing backend systems. This is what we call the last mile. You have to somehow tie into something. And we have a lot of tools on the platform that make that a whole lot easier than otherwise is. Uh, so what is the power of this? Instead of banks and financial institutions on a one-on-one -on -one basis trying to find out things, they use the power of the community. They can see if APIs that they want to use are used by other banks which is kind of an implicit approval. There are, you can see scores, you can see availability. All the things that you normally would not know about the fintech are, are open and transparent for banks to see. And that creates a, a unique information that is currently missing, which gives them basically no reason other than let's go. So this is the platform kind of in a nutshell. Uh, so what, how does it look like? If you are on the platform, you will see a wide variety of different types of solutions provided by uh, fintechs. This could be things like know your customer or lending applications, analytics, things for uh, regulatory reporting, uh, cybersecurity solutions, blockchain solutions. There's a wide range of, of solutions out there. So these are kind of the, the Lego blocks that are on the platform. Um, I wanted to spend a few minutes about, well, you know, we're talking here 
at the, uh, at the block, <laughs> block show. And you may say, what has this to do with us? We're, we're the cool kids. You know, we're, we're, we, have, we have the blockchain. We don't need anything else. Well, okay, sorry about that. But, you know, uh, there's a whole world out there that is looking for blockchain-based solutions uh, to solve uh, interesting problems. I think there's a tremendous opportunity in developing uh, countries to apply blockchain technology, specifically because a lot of infrastructure is not there, and it allows blockchain to, to prosper. This is a cow, obviously, and the reason I put this cow on the screen is, is that in specific countries in Africa and Asia, uh, there's problems where farmers are not able to get loans or money because they simply nobody knows who they are. They can't be recognized. So that's not a, that's not a know your customer problem. But what they do is, is currently some fintechs and some companies are working on using face recognition for cows. And what they do is, is they basically are able to identify uniquely your cow. So know your cow. Once you know that you own a cow, it becomes an asset. So what happens is, is once you have an asset, guess what? You can trade an asset. Once you trade the asset, you create cash flow. Once you create cash flow, you can do credit scoring. All of these things can be done perfectly with blockchains in those countries. Because there are no central registers for cows, believe me. There are no central registers for people in most of these countries. So this creates a huge opportunity for blockchain technologies to come in play and solve problems in the financial world that are not solvable without it. So these are kind of examples of what can be done. I think there's way more possible. The, the, the creativity is the only limitation I think we have in terms of putting blockchain in the financial industry. Um, I talked a lot about fintech, financial industry, etc. But if you have ever developed an application, uh, you know that there's many other APIs and elements you need to finish it. For example, you may want to have a location-aware application. You may want to in, in include a national ID check. You may ha want to have something that integrates with uh, uh, telcos. Uh, so all of these these APIs are also on the platform, so that you can build your whole application in there. So to go back to the Lego analogy. Uh, we have all the blocks, so you don't have to go and say, oh my god, I can't finish this, uh, you know, this castle because you know, the, the, some piece is missing. So that is all, all included as well. Um, we uh, took a task a couple of weeks ago and said, what can we really do with the platform? We currently have uh, many fintechs uh, on, on the platform. And what we did is, is we built an entire bank on the platform, an entire bank including the back end, including all the front end, know your customer, account opening, credit scoring, the whole thing, based and built on top of, of the platform from individual, uh, individual fintechs uh, and uh, providers. So two weeks to build an entire bank. When I started my career uh, a long time ago in the 90s, uh, we, 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 talked, we, we thought that five years was fast. We thought that a half billion dollar was a good deal. Uh, all you need here is a credit card in your imagination. So this is phenomenal, and this is specifically important for Asia, where there's a tremendous amount of banks you will have never ever heard of. In the Philippines alone, there is like five or six hundred regional rural banks that are basically looking for ways out. So if you don't look at the city banks, don't look at the standard charters of the world. We all know about them. But the number of financial institutions in Asia is phenomenal. And many, many of these are looking for new solutions. And this is your potential to grow financial inclusion. A lot of that is SME focused as well. So check it out. But this gives you kind of an idea what is the power in the platform. Uh, currently, we have about 300 financial institutions and fintechs on boarded on the, on the platform. We're growing extremely rapidly, specifically uh, the fintech festival this year. We had an, an, an unbelievable amount of traction from, uh, from many, many, many players. So I do encourage you to go and check it out. Just to be very clear, if you're a fintech and you want to join us, we are a member-based organization. We charge a very modest membership fee uh, to uh, fintechs, and we charge a also very modest fee to banks to use the platform. We work on cost recovery basis, and that's the only way we work. Uh, we are also very, very, very much a community. Uh, all the things that are on the platform today are coming from feedback from fintechs and banks, and we, we will definitely continue to do that. So, having said that, what is in the future? What are we going to do next? Uh, we're barely started. Talking to many fintechs and banks that already gives us daily a lot of ideas. Things we're working on right now is, is we're going to open up the platform for investors to come in and uh, use some of the data on the platform to find uh, I I fintechs to invest in. Of course, if you're a fintech, that is good news. So if you're good performance, we want to help you to find uh, investors for you. Another thing we're working on uh, is uh, as extension of the, the riches of APIs. And we're working on a fintech rating. I think if you were at the fintech festival, it was announced 
uh, MIS and Deloitte are working on a FinTech rating, and this will be integrated on APICS as well. Uh, with that in mind, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. If you want to learn more, go visit, go to our platform, check it out. Uh, we're based in Singapore. We have many people across Asia that are working on this. Reach out, get informed, and get Asia teched up. Thank you so much. Woo! Thank you, Mr. Franken. Thank Please you, give thank him you. another round of applause.